This is part three of a series of three videos that will walk you through the commissioning of the Siemens FS230 clamp-on ultrasonic transmitter. Please be sure that you've watched parts one and two prior to viewing this video. Now that we've set up our fail-safe behavior, proceed to click on Next again. This then allows you to activate a feature called View 3. View 3 allows the resettable feature of a totalizer to be accessed by the operator without the entry of a special password. As an example, if I've activated View 3 and I've totalized 500 gallons over the last hour, I can then come in and without knowing the password, reset the totalizer manually. If that is what you want your operators to be able to do, then this is where you would set that feature up. If not, you select no and then the password stays in place and you need that password to get to the reset feature of the totalizer. You can then follow the same setup parameters to configure totalizers 2 and totalizer 3. Once you've done that, hit next. This completes the process value wizard. The transmitter will tell you this and then you will right click to return to the basic configuration screen. From here, you can go to inputs and outputs. So let's right click on inputs and outputs. This is where you can designate what you want your channel 2, channel 3, or channel 4 to be. There is something to keep in mind at this point. If you didn't order a meter with channel 2, 3, or 4 input output capability, you're not going to be able to make any changes here. These are optional inputs and outputs. It's a little different than the previous ultrasonic clamp on transmitters. In the older product, you basically had three choices, standard, enhanced, or expanded. And those drove how many IOs you had and what they were. With the FS230, we made it a little more menu driven to allow the customer more selectability as far as what IOs they actually need. It's important that you know what was ordered when you get to this point of the transmitter configuration. For this exercise, let's assume that we do have additional outputs, so we're going to click on channel 2 output. From here, you can pick from the menu. Again, as we have seen on other screens, you see the bar on the left. As a reminder, this means there are more choices than you can see on the screen, so use the up and down arrows to go through the available selections. For our purposes, we will select a frequency output, then select that we want process value to be flow velocity. In addition, you can set your direction and your damping value. Since we're using frequency in this example, you'll have the ability to specify the high and the low frequency, as well as the upper and lower range values. As an example, if you want something other than 10,000 Hz as your high value, you can actually set what the maximum frequency value is going to be based on for your application. Once you've made all these selections, and you can see what they are by highlighting them, you then go all the way down to the bottom, select Next, and that gets you to the fail-safe behavior for those inputs and outputs. Here you've got choices as to the fail-safe setting, if something goes wrong. In other words, what do I want my instrument to do? Do I want to hold the minimum frequency? Do I want to hold the maximum? Do I want to go to the last valid value? Do I want to hold the current one or do I want to go to some sort of default safe value? I'm going to select the last valid value and we're going to leave it at that. Then you would do the same things for channel 3 and channel 4, assuming you've got them, and you can configure them accordingly. Finally, go down and click on Next. All right, we've completed the sensor settings, including process values and the inputs and outputs. For this video, we're not going to worry about communication. This simulator doesn't have the ability to set communication, but if you had an actual transmitter and you wanted to set up your communication protocol, whether it's Modbus or Hart, you would do that through the communication selection on this screen. Once you've got all of those set up, you hit Next. From there, you get a selection of identification criteria that are resident on the instrument. You have a long tag, so you have the ability to go in, and since this is an alphanumeric entry, you can make it anything you want it to be. In this case, we have it saying Simulator 1. So if you want to change it, you page up and down to find the letter or number that you need, and you proceed until you spell out the identification you want to use. In addition, you can put in an actual location and an installation date. Once that information is added, select Next and move on from there. At this point, your quick commissioning is finished. Now we're going to press the right key arrow to continue outside of quick commissioning. 
there is one thing that I want you to do now before you go any further. You've gone through and you've set up a lot of information. You can set up additional information if needed and you can tweak whatever you've entered. But my suggestion at this point would be that you page down to copy configuration. What copy configuration is going to do for you is save the information that you've programmed into the instrument itself to the sensor flash and the SD card that's resident on every one of our FS230 transmitters. You're going to want to select OK and once you do, it's going to tell you that it's doing its thing. And then while it's doing its thing, the transmitter is basically just sitting there churning as it saves all the information and then it will tell you that you're done. This does a couple of things for you. First of all, like I said, it backs up your data. That's a good thing. The other thing it does is, well, let's say you've got multiple instruments all being used on similar applications, or you've got the same application across your facility. What you can do with this is you can take out the SD card from the configured transmitter and you can put it into another transmitter. From there, you can upload all the information that you've saved into the new transmitter. It's also great if something goes wrong and you need to replace your transmitter for some reason. You just put the sensor flash into the new transmitter and then you can go into restore and you can bring back the information that was in there and upload it. This saves you all of the programming that we've just walked through. Even if you need to just change your flow rate, for example, you can go in and just pull most of the correct information right up and then tweak your flow rate to what you require. This will help keep it simple as possible for down the line operation of either additional units or replacement units or whatever it might be. Now we've gone through the quick commissioning and hopefully you were able to follow along with this and it made sense to you. Once again, the beauty of the simulator is that you can play with it and get comfortable with it without changing parameters on an instrument and without having to shut down your process in order to look things over. You can actually walk through the setup process. This allows you to get comfortable with what you need to do in a safe environment and then go out and make the actual changes to the instrument. My name is Jack Rauschy. Hopefully this has been a good educational experience for you. We appreciate your time and we look forward to many years of working with you in regards to our FS230 ultrasonic clamp-on transmitter. Thank you.